Moment of truth. All right, well, it's not quite a beautiful day in Florida, but it's not bad at all. Not hot, not muggy, not super unbearingly humid. <laughs> so that means it is a great day to get some work done on the old RX-7. I promised you guys, if you saw the other videos, if you've been following along with this build, we basically took over this abandoned project. We, it came with a motor and trans, went to put the motor and trans in and they wouldn't fit because the steering rack was in the way. So we modified the motor mounts, raised the motor up some, got everything to fit, whole drivetrain's in, exhaust's in. Uh, most of this stuff's in. Basically what's left is plumbing the clutch. We need to put a new clutch master in, which we have. Fuel system, wiring, should drive. So that is the goal. I promised that I would try to get this thing driving in this video because we didn't get it driving last video. Minimum, we're gonna start it. So that's what we gotta do today. I gotta get this thing out, out of the shop and out of the way. We can start working on this guy. Get to it. It's weird seeing this thing with 15s again. It looks so tiny now that I've had the 17s and 16s on there. So I don't know if you can tell, but she's uh, a little muddy. <laughs> the event was rowdy in a good way. Really, really fun. Clutch master cylinder. This one has a Willwood with a remote reservoir. Everything seems to fit good, like with this particular model number master cylinder, but the bore size is too big. It's a one inch bore. We need about a three quarter inch bore. So I ordered what I believe to be the exact same thing with just a different bore size. This is only 70 bucks on Amazon. Like I'm pretty impressed with that. You get a big reservoir, a small reservoir, mounting for it, cap off the remote reservoir, and the other problem we had with that master was it had a dash four fitting in, a four in fitting. Um, and we needed a three because we have a three in line. This one comes with a three in fitting. So hopefully all goes smoothly. Let's start getting this thing installed. All right, hopefully pulling this bad boy out isn't too difficult. One of the bolts is real tight. The stud is butted up against that part of the master, but I think the other one we should be able to get to with an extension. So it might not be too bad. Only one way to find out. And it would appear that this is a bolt, not a stud. <laughs> so we gotta get to it from the back side. <laughs> It'll be all right. We're gonna be all right. Dang it, the wrench fell off the other side. It's a little tricky, single-handed. All right, got a pretty elaborate setup on the other side to hold the wrench. Let's see if it works. Got it. Gotta get the other one. Did it. So we gotta undo the rod where it hooks onto the butt. Oh, okay. For the Quevis, they just had a bolt with no nut. Oh, oh, of course it doesn't fit through though. <laughs> so we gotta unscrew that. So yeah, front suspension's a little soft. All right, well that was quite tricky, but I do believe we got it. We were able to pull the little fork off. I was gonna say, no, don't get caught again. Okay, we got the master out, cool. So let's get the rest of this junk out and uh, see what we're working with. Everything appears to be the same. It looks like they shortened this rod up a bunch. Let's see if this threads on this rod. Thread on, okay. Just shorten this rod the same amount. Threads seem to come out a lot better on the uh, bandsaw than trying to cut with a cutoff wheel. It's just easier to kind of stay in between threads and have a good start to wherever the cut is without issue. So, cool, that seems to work. 
we need to find a nut to transfer over for like a lock nut and then we can start installing this thing. Ready to go. Have to pull this bellow off. So I matched the rod length to the old one and I should have looked at it before I did that because you can see how much higher this pedal is than this pedal. Um, so that would be super annoying if you go from like left foot braking to trying to hit the clutch. You know, you've got like a four inch, you gotta lift your foot up and go over. So I think the only reason they had it this long was because their threads ended on that other rod, whereas this, we've got more threads to go. So I'm gonna pull it out and cut it a good bit shorter. I don't know, what do you think, like an inch? It's hard to tell because of the lever ratio, how much shorter it needs to be. <sighs> I'd say probably close to an inch, maybe a little less so we don't screw it up, but anyway, as much as I don't want to, I'm gonna take it back out and uh, fix this so it's not so jank. All right, get the uh, master cut again. Pedals are literally perfectly even. I almost would have wanted the clutch to be a tiny bit higher, but I'm happy with that. They're pretty much dead even, so. I'm gonna bolt the rest of this up. Oh, I gotta hook the clevis up. Did I do that already? I need to make this uh, hose a little smaller. Change the angle of this guy here. Clutch line goes on, so that's good. I was a little concerned. It seemed like it might interfere. And then I was smart enough this time to make a bleeder long enough to put, hopefully long enough, to put into, yeah, we're gonna have to route it the other way to do this. Basically, I should be able to put it into the reservoir of the clutch, like this, and then just bleed it by myself, just pump it back through to it itself. So instead of spraying this on the floor, it'll just go right back into the reservoir. It's the plan at least, but we gotta get this hose lining correct. All right, we got the reservoir bolted up. Everything hooked up. Oh, and perfect. Just barely long enough for this. You can just zip tie it up out of the way, but boom, put it in there just like that. And we'll just pump it right through to itself. So I gotta tighten all these fittings down. Uh, fill her with fluid and see what happens. All right, we gotta run to the store to get some brake fluid. Am I an old man because I would almost always rather drive my comfy single cab short bed six liter swap truck around that's automatic and my door's cracked open and has comfy seats than any of my other cars that are more fun. Does that make me old? If it makes me feel old. Definitely makes me feel old. But we're not taking that today. We're gonna take the Sephiro. I've been itching to drive this thing. I haven't really had a good excuse to drive it anywhere but around town. So we've got a decent drive to get to the parts store. So we're gonna take this old girl. The key for this and my truck key look like almost identical. It really throws me off. Oh, I got this AC vent. Oh my God. A throwback CD in here, so now we can jam. Uh, so I got this uh, cup holder off Amazon. It was still kind of pricey because it is still from Japan. It was like 15 bucks, but these things are amazing if you have like a old import car with no cup holders. I think, yeah, I think it was like 15 or 16 bucks. If I, they're still around, I'll put the link below. Uh, but anyway, let's go to the store. Made it. We're back from the parts store. Got our fluid. Let's fill her up, see what happens. Who thinks I'm gonna spill it? Oh, all of you? Watch this. Oh, oh, there's not enough room to lift it all the way though. Oh, we gotta go higher. Oh, sketchy. So now I'll just get this bleeder cracked open already. So we'll shove it in here. Okay, why? Right. First thing we need to do is bench bleed it. <laughs> so luckily, a lot of these aftermarket, like master cylinders, they have a built-in bleeder for bench bleeding. Normally you'd have to take the line off, you know, put a fitting in there, bleed it back to itself, and then you would be able to uh, do what you need to do. Oh, it's bubbling, it's all bubbling out. Look at that. It's freaking ripping some bubbles. I've never done it like this, so I don't, you know, I don't know. Try bench bleeding it too. Try closing that one off. Stay in there. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, so I've got it closed and we've got pretty decent pedal feel. You can see, wow, you can see how much the master is flexing. So I'm gonna hold. Oh God, this is tricky. Oh, this is a bit of a reach. That worked, because now I, you know, I don't have to have someone under there, I can just do it myself. 
I gotta move you guys out of the way though. <laughs> I can't really get to it. It's hard enough to get to it without you guys standing right between me and it. So you gonna have to move over. All right, honestly, that seems to be good. Clutch feels great. I didn't I didn't really do much like normal bleeding. I just stuck it in here with the bleeder open, let it cycle through, cause it was basically, you know, as it pumped through, it was filling this up and repeat, 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 and it seems fine. We need to figure out how to secure both the clutch feed line and this uh, remote bleeder line. You can see down here, this guy gets a little close to the header and is basically touching the steering shaft right there. So maybe use a couple P-clamps to just keep it out of the way. Okay, well, the clutch wasn't disengaging, so we bled it, had Ben help me, still wasn't disengaging. The problem is in here, so basically I shortened this too much. I needed it. If I had left it where it was originally, we would be in great shape right now. But since I shortened it, basically there's not enough travel. If I put the fork behind the clutch like this, you know, to where it's basically behind the arm, it works, it disengages. So basically I've got to build something to mount that fork a little further back so that the clutch travels further. Moral of the story. So I'm gonna pull this pedal out and weld up something to work and uh, hopefully that solves our problem. But otherwise, it's all bled up. Looks kind of fancy too with that remote reservoir. Okay, back to work. More clutch stuff. Oh, this clip is being mighty difficult here. The clip that holds the uh, clutch like return spring on that I gotta get out so I can pull the clutch pedal out. Oh. It's just one of those, uh, you're gonna stab yourself for sure with the screwdriver type of deals. Yep, there we go, stab number one. All right, we got it. Let's see if we can get her off. Oh, she's uh, on there good. There we go. Oh, oh, that came apart. All right, we got it though. Oh, it's aluminum, God. That's okay, I have aluminum. I can weld aluminum, but geez. I did not expect this pedal to be aluminum. I guess they, they all are. That's kind of cool though. I don't know how I didn't notice that. Basically what I need to do is just weld a piece right here and then that way I can drill a hole pretty much, you know, right here is where the hole needs to be. So I'll try to add some metal, drill a hole, see how it goes. Wish me luck. This might actually work pretty good. If I shaved it down a little bit. I guess let's try it. Let's cut it down some first. It needs to be a little narrower than this, I believe. I believe I can cut it down. Should be good enough. Let's clean this up. I think we need more cleaning action. It's not the prettiest job ever with it being as dirty as it was, but it's definitely welded on. Should work just fine. We just gotta drill out that hole. Just let it cool down a little bit and then throw it in. Hope that's wide enough. So that was anodized black. Now look at it now. It, it turned gold with the heat. It's kind of interesting. I don't know the science behind that, but kind of cool nonetheless. All right, let's throw this thing in. All right, well, don't be like me. Don't rush. Uh, I didn't notice this bushing was stuck in here uh, when I started welding it because I was just trying to hammer it out and uh, melted the bushing. So I had to get in there with a carbide burr and clean it up, but we got it back in and we're gonna be able to get it back together. Moral of the story, lesson of the day, don't rush things if you don't have to. If you don't absolutely have to. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. It works. The clutch master bottoms out before the pedal bottoms out. Everything feels nice, it feels like like it should. You know, it actually has some pressure once you get down past the point where it was bottoming out before. Uh, so yeah, cool, came out really good. There's no slop or play anywhere. Feels good, I know there's probably, there's other ways to do that. I could have extended the rod or whatever, but this just seemed like the simplest solution for me than having to re-bleed everything after I took it all apart. So cool, I'm happy with that. I know it's stout, should hold up, works good. 
Sweet, now we can move on. So we've got our Detrox pump. We're just gonna run an in-tank pump. Uh, I had it in there already, but I took it out when I was gonna sell the RX-7. And then we have our fuel fittings for our Corvette fuel pressure filter regulator deal. So we can do our fuel lines, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, first, I wanna work on wiring. So we need to make a new mount for the ARC relay board, which did go on that janky one self tappered end mount there. And then for the push button, eight pad button switch panel deal, where we're gonna mount that. So we need to start welding up, fabbing up some mounts for this. So this is what the uh, switch panel relay board looks like. It's just a circuit board with relays and fuses on it. The benefit to the circuit board is you only have to run this ribbon cable to the switch pad itself. So you don't have to run power and ground and have feet, power feeds and stuff going through here. So it's easier to remote mount this. So we are going to mount it in an interesting spot instead of mounting it, you know, close by. So anyway, we need to figure out our mounting for the board first. I've got this flat bar here. I think this should work as long as it's double the length, which, oh, it's gonna be close. I have more if I need it, but I'd hate to break into a new piece if I don't have, oh my, it's literally like perfectly, almost perfectly double the length. So I think we'll just weld them. Oh, we just need a little bit more. You can see it's it's real close to being the right width, but we need about, you know, an inch and a half or so. So we'll weld the two together to make our mount and then weld it in the same spot basically, but just way more secure. seems a bit too large. We'll leave a little bit, see it will double that length up, just if we have to contour it to the uh, dash bar. Last thing I welded with aluminum, almost started that weld on AC, but then I remembered. Water cool. Just remember all the things today. Came out okay. I was trying to uh, space the beads out a lot just for fun because it doesn't need to be really inherently structural, so. All right, well, I need to go get some more self-tappers, but anyway, I just drilled four holes in it and we'll just self-tapper it in. I don't have any nuts and bolts that are small enough for this. Self-tappers will do. So anyway, now it's time to weld it in the car. It's pretty much center. doing anything. <laughs> At least we got attacked. It does fit in the dash, sort of, and it uh, seems like that spot's gonna work pretty well. I aimed it down just a little bit just to keep it from being so high, but I wanna be able to get to it because before it was so buried that you couldn't really get to any of the wiring. So looks like that should work. Dash isn't fully in. I gotta move some stuff around, but I need to find a new dash. This dash is just effed, man. <laughs> I just, I need a new one. I hate, it drives me nuts how destroyed this dash is. I don't see why they cut it up so much. It's like completely unnecessary. Anyway, let's weld this out. All right, so I want to weld it from the top to the bottom. Probably go from the top, I guess. I think my gas isn't turned up enough, but whatever. It doesn't have to be that strong. All right, threw some paint on it, came out just fine. Now we can move on to mounting the push button deal. Uh, so, uh, I've got a plan. 
for this. If you saw the last time we, I was looking at mounting this, I was trying to figure out how, you know, my original plan was just weld a plate on the roll cage, screw it into this, but then I realized where I want to mount it, there's no way I'm going to get to these screws. So what I'm going to do is, well, you know, I have a plate back here with holes drilled in it to screw into this and then weld tabs that come down here just far enough to get a bolt in. So I'll be able to just unbolt it, take it off. That's my rough game plan. Maybe I could do it from the top even. I might do it from the top and then I could use uh, riv nuts. So I don't know, I gotta, I'm gonna make the back plate and then kind of figure it out from there. You know what? Let's make it out of aluminum. We'll use this from the tab for the tabs on the cage to weld onto the cage and then we'll just build the other mount out of this because they're just going to bolt together so they don't have to both be steel. Um, and I have more aluminum and I, you know, I haven't welded aluminum in a bit so might as well dust the rust off. So we just need a couple tabs to come off of this piece. Make sure I get them in between the holes here. Then about like that. All right, let's tack her up. I want to clean it with uh, denatured alcohol, but I don't want to wipe my Sharpie marks off. So I'm going to tack it and then we'll clean it up good and then we'll weld it out. Not the best tax, but tax nonetheless. Let's clean it. All right, well, that actually came out halfway decent. Not too mad about that at all. For her, I have not done this in a bit. I have not take all the aluminum in what I feel like, feels like forever. But anyway, okay, so that's done. So now we need to start working on drilling our holes in the metal part and yeah, everything else basically is what we need to work on now. All right, I found the right screws at the hardware store. We got our holes drilled. I did miss one. It's like a hole width off, but the other three went, so I'm good with that. This thing was held on with one before, so I think three will do the trick. All right, there we go. That's that. So now we just need to build our little metal pieces with the rib nuts. So I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna do that. All right, let's get these cut. Ta-da! The only thing that I think is gonna be tricky is figuring out how to mark where I need it to go and get it tacked in place. I feel like that's gonna be tough because it, it's so tight to the back there. We're just gonna try it. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, I went, I went, I went to the store to get those other screws. I got myself tappers, so that's all mounted up. So we're good there. Let's finish this up. It's late, kind of ready to call it for tonight, but I wanna get this done before I call it. Let's see if it all lines up. Oh wait, wrong side. <laughs> all right, well, all we gotta do is get these metal pieces tacked on. Wish me luck. All right, well, what the chances of this going very well. <laughs> Pretty slim. Looks like I gotta get them tacked in the perfect spot at the perfect angle. I feel like that is going to be a bit of a challenge. But we're gonna try it. We'll tack them. Hope for the best. Uh, 
cramped in here. Looks pretty close. Dang, that's gonna work. I'm pretty impressed with that because I didn't even oversize the holes on the aluminum mount because I was like, I want to try to make it fit right, not have to run a big hole to get the bolt in. Look at that. Ah, everything's falling down on me, but we got it. I'm just gonna weld it out. We continue to try to get in a better position for it. Not as bad as I was anticipating. Probably give it a second to cool down because I need to run that wire through, but yep, it winds up. Alright, I'll uh, let it cool down and then we'll bolt it up. <sighs> Ta da! It's done! Boom, boom, boom. Sweet, I'm hyped on that, that looks good. That came out really, really good. It's perfect, it's exactly what I wanted. We'll have to uh, tuck the wire up there and run it down to the arc, and then we can start wiring up the arc, like the actual circuit board down there, which also came out nice. So, it's probably the biggest part of this part of the project, getting that stuff done. So, should be relatively smooth sailing from here till driving, shouldn't say that. <laughs> All right, well, it is a new day. It means we've got a full day to finish this up get everything I want to get done done. So now that that stuff is mounted, uh, we're good to go there. Instead of jumping onto the wiring next, I want to go ahead and move on to doing the fuel system because that way, once we get the fuel system done, the last thing to do is the wiring. So if I have plenty of time, I can go through and fix all the wiring. Um, you know, and if we're running low on time to get this thing running, I can just do what's necessary. But you know, I don't want to rush through it and then have time and go back to it. So anyway, Basically, we're moving on to the fuel system next. So let me show you what we got for that. It's a very simple solution for doing a fuel system on an OS. So we have this Corvette. Oh man, this thing is pretty beat. Gonna have to get a new one, um, which this, this will work for now, but we definitely wanna get a new one. I didn't notice that. Oh, dropping fuel everywhere. Good job, Taylor. So anyway, basically this is a filter and a fuel pressure regulator in one. So the other benefit to using this setup is it you can run it basically this is how a natural ls system is returnless you have this filter regulator you have a feed in it regulates and then returns back to the tank so what we're going to do is mount this right by the tank have a short feed and return and then only have one big feed running all the way to the engine so that's kind of the game plan so we have all these Dietchworks fittings so we'll be able to run our you know am braided line to every port on here no they're not eights All right, well, I need to actually tighten those down with some wrenches, but that's what it looks like. So we've got our eight out, our six in and return. So let's go figure out where we're gonna mount this. All right, actually, before we mount this, we need to put our fuel pump back in our cinder here. I took it out when I was gonna sell the shell. Now we just gotta put these two connectors together. Ta-da! fuel pump hanger assembly back in. So I guess now we're gonna go up and try to figure out where we're gonna mount stuff from the bottom. We don't wanna mount it back in here. We're gonna keep it under the car. I think I found a good spot for it. There's already a hole right there that seems to be the most out of the way spot. So my plan is to try to mount it there. Okay, so what we're gonna do first, get this fitting in the fuel rail, the one that we wanna feed into, take our dash eight line, which we already have a 90 on from when we were going to do the search tank, 
run it from the front to the back, and then kind of go from there. So they have the feed coming in on this rail because this is the easiest route to bring the line up. So it's the shortest run. But you can see that this rail is much further back than this rail. So we're gonna switch the cap to this rail and then put our fitting on that rail because there is no way we are going to fit a dash eight fitting between the uh, rail and the firewall here. feed line is completely finished up it's hooked up now we just need to make our 2-6 line so we'll do that a little quicker oh that didn't work hold on all right got the fuel lines all finished up everything's tightened up it's got one more thing to do with the fuel system okay so the last thing I want to do is just switch out this uh, crossover so this is a 8 a.m. crossover well, which we will need to take advantage of the 8 a and feed, uh, but for right now we don't need that much fuel. And this, I want to save this for the fuel rails that it came with, because I'll probably end up using those on something else. So worst case, you know, if we need to, we can we can use it for this if we you know when we turbo this or whatever. But for now, I'm just going to use the stock kind of janky one. It'll get us by. All right, well that pretty much completes the stage one fuel system, which is, you know, for simple, naturally aspirated since we're not turboing it right now. Everything looks good, really happy with how it all came out. So now that that's done, the last thing is wiring. And we do have a good bit of time, uh, not a ton of time, but we, we have definitely more time than I expected. So we should be able to do a halfway decent job at this. It's just kind of just such a mess. And I just want to redo it all, but I also just want to get it working. So I don't know. I'm going to dive in here. I'll update you as I go along, but it's kind of a boring process anyway. So probably just see you on the other side. All right. So I've just been doing some stuff. Uh, basically, I got this loosely wired up just to try to start the engine. Um, and, you know, most of the things in place. I've still got to strip some stuff out and whatever. But I kind of figured out where everything went by testing with the power probe. There's this one wire, this big purple wire. So on my Miata harness, this went from the fuse box to the fuel pump. It had its own relay, and that was our, my fuel, fuel pump power. On this harness, it doesn't come from the fuse box. It goes down into the main engine harness. So I assumed, okay, it's probably injector and coil pack power. It was hooked up to this ignition source. So I uh, hooked it back up that way, blew the fuse. So I was like, okay, got a problem. I messed around with that, you know, unplugged the injectors, unplugged the coil packs and whatever. And it still was, it still was short now. And then I remembered that there was the crank sensor, which is down by the starter. There was this little ring terminal, uh, like wire with a ring terminal coming off of it. And I assumed that that was just another ground, right? Well, so I hooked that up to ground. So I unhooked that from ground. Now we don't have a short, but we still don't have power at our coil packs or our injectors. I don't know where that wire could go because you know, if it went to the starter trigger, then it would trigger the starter or it would only come on when the starter's triggering it. So like, that's kind of weird. Um, so anyway, basically I need to figure out if my ECU is even getting power and turning on um, because I don't, you know, I don't know for sure that I wired that up correctly because the wire colors were weird. It was like pink, pink and black and gray. I think I've got that correct, but I don't know. So yeah, okay, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna hook up HP tuners and whatever, but we're there as soon as I can figure out why my injectors, my coil packs aren't getting power. Once we figure that out, it should start, should run, I believe. So wish me luck. All right, before I go any further, give you guys a little update. Basically, I figured out that the computer is not getting power, wouldn't connect to HP tuners, which it said was an error, but I was like, okay, maybe the ECU is not on. So I switched some of the wires around. The one with the black stripe was apparently ignition trigger. So I put that one on the uh, ignition switch portion for the computer on the arc board. So I got power to the computer, computer turned on. Cool, we were good there. We were able to connect to HP tuners. I then verified that the injectors and the coil packs were getting power because they should have power all the time and then get triggered ground and that's how they turn on. So all of that's good. It fired on starting fluid. So I'm like, okay, seems like we don't have fuel, uh, but the pump is running. Everything seemed good there. So I pulled the fuel line at the rail, no fuel up there. Pulled the feed line back here on you know the, the outlet side of the filter regulator there, no fuel there. So 
Now I gotta dig into these two lines, the feed and return from the tank, and hope I don't get showered in fuel, or at least hope if I do get showered in fuel, I figure out the problem, and the problem is not, I don't know. <laughs> so I did verify that I have these correct. I have the feed and return going to the right spots. I know that much. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Wish me luck. Hopefully we figure it out without getting showered in fuel. All right, so I believe that the fuel pump was wired backwards, and instead of sucking, it was basically pushing, because the factory RX-7 connector that's, that's on the fuel hanger assembly just had two black wires. So I just wired it up with the first way that came to mind. Didn't even think about the fact that if I reverse polarity, the pump would spin the wrong way. So I wasn't getting fuel even, even to the filter regulator. So now we have fuel, it's wired up correctly. I have faith that it's gonna start, but I'm not sure. So I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, so I don't look like a fool. But we're gonna try to start it. I want you guys to see my genuine reaction to it actually starting, if it actually starts. But with my luck, since I'm recording, it won't start, but we'll see. Moment of truth. Oh, nope, not success, we got a leak. Okay, leak is fixed, it was that freaking crossover tube, so we'll just have to shorten this one and run it. Let's try this again, Let's see how she does. I'm gonna try to find, I know I have some stock oil pressure sensors around here. I'm gonna try to plug one in and just see what it is. Cause it's right now it's got this aftermarket one. I guess I could try to put that one up. I just don't really know how it goes. There's a lady bug. No, it's a, I don't know. There's some sort of bug crawling on you. It's weird looking. I'm gonna try to figure out if I have oil pressure, but it starts and it idled fine. That's amazing. <laughs> That's with a tune that Matt Happel from Slack Mechanics had for a turbo uh, four eight or six, I don't know, Turbo Colorado similar size injectors. These are 100 pound injectors and it's an NA and it's running fine. So, I mean, anyway, I'm hyped, I'm hyped. I'm just nervous because that was a lot of quackety quack. It makes me concerned. So we're gonna, we're gonna hook up the oil pressure sensor or something. All right, you can hear it's a little clicky, um, but I mean, we've got good oil pressure. I don't really trust this gauge all that much. I think it starts at like six, but that might be our exhaust leak. Well, I still need to fill up the trans fluid. Um, it is getting a little late to be running a V8 smoking out the shop, holy cow. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about the clickety clack. Where's that smoke coming from? Oh, is it coming off here? Just from touching the headers and stuff, I would assume. Um, like I said, I am a little concerned. Oh, we got some oil on the rockers now, I think. Maybe it just took it that long to get oil up to the heads. I don't know, it's kind of weird. A little bit concerned. I don't, I definitely don't trust that gauge. Like I don't think it's 100% accurate or anything, but I mean, it was reading five with the engine off and reading 60 with the engine on, you know, so it made a change. It definitely seems like it was making oil pressure, but you know, I don't know. I don't know for sure. Very quacky. I mean, it is 100% possible that when we started this motor up before, we couldn't even hear that because of how loud the open headers were. You know, I don't really know. 
I don't know, but I mean, it runs. That was my goal. We didn't get it driving, um, but we're very, very close. We got a few more things to do. Oh, I also bolted the seat in. I didn't show you guys that, but I did bolt the seat in. So that's sturdy and solid. We're good there. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's gonna be it for this video. We'll have to pick this back up another time, probably tomorrow and the next day, and try to get this thing driving under its own power. We're not too far away. We got, we need to tidy up the wiring, fulfill the rest of the fluids, and, uh, you know, odds and ends. So I guess for now though, that is gonna be it for this video. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time while we're driving it. All right, goodbye.